Hi. If you're watching this video, it's because you want to know how to properly make a DC, AC to DC, 12 volt or any other voltage, whatever you have, power adapter, and wire it to be SAE, and why you want to do it this way, and why you want to follow this forward in all of your electronic building uh, habits. Okay, so first off, do not do this with the AC to DC adapter plugged in. If you do, and you cross the wires, you will short out the adapter, and you will damage components on the inside. So I cannot stress this enough. Do not do this to powered electronics. Okay. For the sake of brevity, I've already pre-stripped all the wires, but you're obviously going to want to do that. Um, I'm going to be using these crimp uh, type connectors I got from Napa. These are 16 to 14 gauge. Okay. And they don't need to be, the wire doesn't need to be all that long. So I do need to trim some of this back. Okay, it can also be advantageous to strip more wire and then fold it back if you're using connectors that are oversized. In this case, we can still get away with it. But if we can create a more solid connection by filling these adapters, we're just going to do it. Okay, this is the crimping tool. It's from uh, Princess Auto. Use whatever crimping tool you so desire. Okay, and I guess I should point out, after you do this step, this should be your did I get everything ready step because you want to have your heat shrink on obviously before you connect to the other wires. Okay, so in a 12 volt system it is critical that positive never be exposed to ground. Okay, and that should seem obvious, you know, creating a fault, but specifically the chassis generally of whatever you're dealing with in a 12 volt system can be considered ground and you can attach things directly to the chassis instead of running back to the battery or back to, you know, a pause or a negative lead and a negative lead would come right off the battery to, to the chassis. So, um, because you never want to create a fault situation. You never want the positive to be exposed to that, okay? And so, uh, in choosing your connectors, you want to have the positive, in this case I've chosen the white wire, uh, to be my positive in this case. And, l listen, wires can be fucking any color. Doesn't mean shit, okay? You need to apply logic in your circuitry. This could all be covered up, right, if it was, um covered wire specifically you don't know even know what's what's on the inside so i mean what do you know <laughs> so this positive coming out of the power supply needs to be shielded and it is here more or less right as much as you could expect and then negative is exposed okay now something we want to do before we put anything to uh to practice is we want to test and check every step of the way. And there we go. This is positive, positive 12 volts. Okay. And immediately we'll go back to an unenergized state. And you could check that again, you know, if it really mattered to you. Okay. So there we go. Positive is shielded. Negative is exposed.
All right, we got some pretty good physical connections. Yeah, you know, I know uh, soldering is, you know, the best. But unless you're set up to solder fast and you like breathing fumes, because guess what? You're going to breathe some fumes when you solder. It's just the way of life. Brief intermission here. Well, I get the fucking heat gun plugged in. Okay. Check what you're doing. And then do it. All right. Critically important. You must let this cool. Because if you try and move this heat shrink and just ram it right up over top of these, first off, these are gonna fight you, the lips, and it's too hot, okay? Another good practice, potentially, is to stagger your connections so you can fit smaller you know, cables and it won't bulge as much. That's what the real pros do, I think. <laughs> So you could have one connection right here and then one there and, you know, stagger it down so it's... And that, that kind of provides structure, you know, as you go, instead of this one bulge. This is where we find we didn't size the heat shrink big enough. Or we didn't wait too long enough. You'll notice I'm not really being gentle with this. And that's sort of a proof of concept, I guess. Physical verification of effectiveness. All right, and then the equipment isn't done until it's tested. So now we check, including to verify polarity. That's better. All right, and we have 12 volts across with hot being shielded. So there you go. That's how you connect an AC to a DC adapter. And I guess if I failed to mention it, the hot lead on almost all of these AC to DC adapter type devices, all, almost all these power cords will have a dashed white line. If you could see the two uh, conductors, the one with the dashed white line is the positive conductor. Good luck.